The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate your growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials down 83. NASDAQ is up 8. S&P is a flat. Gold contract up $7.20, trading 1428. You get silver up 19 cents, $16.66. Light sweet crude up 39 cents, $57.17 a barrel. Notes and bonds, they just won't give it up, folks. You get the 10 year note up nine ticks, 127.20. 30 year up 20 at 154.29. And the kicker here, folks, is that every time that they pull back, you get light volume, you get small price spread. When they go forward, and like today, the SP is shaking off the negative wants to go higher, is going higher, and notes and bonds are still going higher. That's a heads up in a big way. King dollar. King dollar got over its highs of yesterday, got right next to its high of 97.715 and gave it up. So we'll see where that baby's going to go. We got the euro trading right now at the 111. The yen is at 107.98 and the pound is out here at 125. So the pound's getting some action on the way up. The euro is the one that got smoked yesterday um, when, uh, you know, well, it's been getting smoked for a while, actually. Yeah, right. Yeah. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Kevin Hinks at TD Ameritrade. Link a swim as we do each and every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, every trading day right here, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time, you want to understand option, option strategies, futures, outstanding program. If you haven't test driven yet, the Think Swim platform, real easy to do. As you're at our website at TFNN, you just hit that banner, bring it up. They'll allow you to trade with paper money. You can follow Excuse Kevin and his team every trading day right here at TFNN. Kevin Hanks, what's going on? Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Tommy. You know, it's just another slow summer day, kind of a lethargic trade here. You know, uh, I don't know no, what we can look at. Not, not exactly. <laughs> I mean, there's there's politics, there's business, there's breaking news, there's earnings, there's economic data is light, but later on in the week, it's going to get pretty heavy in terms of some economic data. So if, if you like trading and you like movement, these markets are giving you everything you can handle and more. And then we got oil numbers in a half hour. So you got commodities right. too, Kevin. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> and listen, folks, the, the Texas Instruments, folks, Texas Instruments is up nine and a half dollars. OK, you're talking about, number one, a monster company. It's blowing away a consolidation that it's been in since January of 2018. You know, Kevin, yesterday when these numbers were coming out, there's yeah. quite a few of these equities that are blowing away a monster consolidation of almost a year and a half. So Right. Well, think about it, Tom. When you talk about especially the semiconductor sector, yes. right, what happened in Micron, yesterday what happened in Texas Instruments, traders are starting to look forward on these to kind of a getting through the inventories and really a better remember when everyone was talking about the second half of 2019 being better for all the semis and then they kind of pushed that out to 2020 uh right. with some of the inventory news and things like that now it looks like those with with, with micron the the action in that stock and now texas instruments earnings it looks like some of those dates are getting pushed back into 2019 in terms of a, of a recovery in the semiconductor sector. So, you know, stocks are forward looking and people are are taking a good hard look at these names. Big time. And you know, it's amazing what you're saying, Kevin. Over the course of years, like it seems like the chip stocks are really almost commodity stocks, right? Yeah. Like, every single time that like, they go down to the doldrums, right? It's like, well, they're down to the doldrums. Oh, things have changed now, okay? And then you give it six or eight months and they go exponential again. I remember the first right. time, you know, years ago when I was first getting in the market, I really didn't know what Intel did. And folks, believe it or not, you know, in the 80s, Intel would go low. Do you know what I mean? And and then you know, it's like, oh, you know, it's really low. They're not selling enough. And then it's like, are you kidding me, man? And then six months later, it would go exponential again. I mean, right. it does, does those rounds, right? And more people, more machines, more chips, right? I mean, th th you know, this is a story of good companies with bad news getting beat up for traders and investors. Th th these are some of the ones you should be looking at. I mean, when you're talking about a market at the all-time high, 
people are looking for sectors that are beaten up yes. and and maybe have a chance you know to outperform right everyone's chasing uh yield r right now right so people are looking around for what's cheap and what looks cheap and there are some i mean three six months ago the semiconductor sector was in tatters oh right yeah. down there and beaten up down. and there was no outlook for positive yeah 50 percent down you know pretty amazing. right you know i mean you, you know you think about that you're seeing some of that in retail right now yes if, if people are betting against retail i mean look at some of the yields on some of these retail stocks Nordstrom's over 5% dividend yield now. So, I mean, some of these stocks look awfully cheap based on the rest of the world and what we see, unless, of course, they're absolutely going to zero, which, frankly, I don't think so. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't. These, you know, what you still see, which is pretty amazing, I forget what company it was, but you have, it might have been Nordstrom, actually, they're putting 500 million into one store. I mean, it was like, what? I mean, yeah. you know, it's, it's like, those types of numbers, it seems that they make much more than just the top of my head goes. I mean, sure. when you can yeah. when you can invest that kind of money, it's like okay. You're Think talking. about this, Tom. We were on the air yesterday, Oliver Rennick and I, as that news broke about the Department of Justice looking at uh, some of these, Big you know, some yeah. of these companies, and they didn't name names, right? Right. But when you talk about social, you talk about search, and you talk about retail. Guess who you're talking about, right? You're talking about Google, you're talking about Facebook, and you're talking about Amazon. Yes. So that's going to put a blanket over some of these names and some uncertainties, even on a day where Facebook's earnings are coming out, and you know as well as I do, all they do is make money. Oh, yes. my God. Print and press. But they've got risks going forward. I mean, yeah. some of the things they came out with with their fine today, Mark Zuckerberg has some – downside if you go through some of the details of this report and what kevin's talking about folks is that he personally has to sign off every quarter yeah. that that he is doing everything that each and every one of us have privacy sure so it's like i have no idea how he could ever do that <laughs> it's like really yeah, yeah. you know i mean like, can you what? imagine the responsibility trying to sign off on that no whoa yeah, no but particularly because He's the kingmaker anyway, you know yeah. what I mean? I mean, he, he understands that whole thing more than anyone. And, you know, when you take a look at it, it's like, okay, it's definitely part of the business plan. <laughs> so, And it, think about this, guys. Just, you know, we don't like to talk too much about politics, but, the you know, the Democratic part of our government is a little more into regulation than the Republicans. But guess what? With these firms, re Republicans are giving them no shelter or comfort from this. Well, so they're under a full court press. Well, see, that's what I... I so, hope we, so. They well, should be. What's so cool <laughs> about this, be. this is what, you know, I always say the politics is the, is the worst shocks, right? Financial is right there, though. Once you get into the financial, then then there's no colors here, man. <laughs> right. And that's exactly. what's happened. You know what I mean? It's like they, they've put probably too many firms out of business that, that are big dudes also. That's, you know, so... You know, it's going to come back. There's no doubt, man. Listen, folks, right here, 45 minutes from now, outstanding program. You want to understand options, option strategies, futures, outstanding program. Kevin, you have a great one, a safe one. Of course, we look forward to the program in 45 minutes. Always. Th th thanks for having me on, guys. Thanks, thanks so much, Kevin. Man. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials down 72. NASDAQ is up 8. S&Ps are up 1. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today.
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials down 74. NASDAQ is up 7. S&P's are flat out here. Let's see uh, what else we get. We have, so Texas Instruments, TXN. Let's go into this because this is... One more time. Uh, uh, yeah, just everywhere earnings, man. I was trying to you know, put together a few things, the updates, right? I was like, man, I'm never going to be able to talk about everything we have going on this morning. Not even getting into the broader. Just the stocks that are moving from their earnings. Yeah. Right. So with Texas Instruments, now I get this on a weekly. So let's see. That's $34 million. And we're at Wednesday, right? That's we are. 16. It'll, be, it'll be close. Yeah, you never really know what today's going to add, as right. in earnings days, right. uh, an anomaly of its own. So Now, another way to do the price projection is to just take the top of the bottom of the consolidation. So the top of the consolidation is 120. Okay. The bottom out there is 87. So let's okay. just call it 88. Yep, so 22. You, so. 22 on. Well, it's more than 22, right? Yeah. One, 120. Oh, okay, yeah, 32. Thank you. Yeah, so. That gets you uh, 152. Okay. And this is quite a move, man. Yeah. <laughs> what, what happens, folks, if you get a consolidation, then you get a move like this. It's like it's just much more powerful. Sure. So that is one big number. Oh, we'll go to Snap. Snap is finally over yeah. its IPO price now they by had, 25 cents. We went well, into, look at that. It's underneath it again. We went into some of the expected one-day moves, right? Yeah. I think Snap was like about $2.15. Um, so huge move. But if you're thinking, oh, man, why wasn't I making money on that move? Right. This is where, man, it makes sense. Watch that fast market right after our program. Right. Because I think that was pretty much the expected move. And so, that would have been built in the option market. Yeah. You exactly. know, the one day move, too. Right. Um, basically, the earnings move. Right. So if you had played both sides, so yeah. you're playing a volatility trade. So yeah. if you just played a bullish pop, yeah, you could have made money. OK. Yeah. But if you just wanted to play volatility and you wanted both sides of it, it's actually, I think, under the expected move. So you might have lost money on a move where it's you're talking about 15%. Right. So now the, the cool thing here for Snap is that it's an ABC up. Um, you know, even already, you know, we already got uh, 165 million versus 123. So that would get it somewhere around 20 bucks. You what know? is the oh, low? No, no, hold Sorry, 18, I was 1896. Okay, I was just. What is the low we we're talking about before? I you said six. I thought it was six. No, 496. Oh, look at that. 482. 482, and I believe that was right around an earnings or coming into an earnings as well, um, maybe December. 
Yeah, and we'll see what they have, though, in terms of, uh, let's see what their revenues were. Because They're still losing money. They're, yeah, they're, that's, you know, I, that's why it's like, this is still a story to be, t oh, okay. Oh, don't you need? I just, no, I just wanted to see what their actual revenue, their numbers, you know, to see what kind of growth and so forth. So they just took in $388 million, up from $320. Yeah. Um, you know, I know there was some... They, they had some cool filters that were out there <laughs> that they talked about, right, driving. I use Snapchat. Um, go ahead. You want to go into the earnings? Yeah. They, um, they had, they, they kept talking about they got the um, Android, Android fix. Android That's fix. it. Okay. Yeah, That's, right. Uh, and I, I'm, I don't use Android, so I, I have no yeah. revelation to that. Um, average of 203 million users logged on. In logged in quarter. daily daily that's a yeah. pretty cool so 191 was the estimate that's a huge you know that's if you just get people right yeah um that's all that meant you can you can figure out a way to monetize them at some point um shares jump 13 percent let's see upbeat forecast daily users of 205 to 207 in the next quarter turned optimistic um let's see what we got here Net loss. There we go. Narrowing to 255 million. Still so much money. Quarter That's of a, a billion dollars quarter, a year. Quarter of a billion in 90 days. Right. Exactly. Um, you better be. Now they lost 350 a year ago. So wow. they, they trimmed it by 100. Um, Pretty wild. It is. It let's is. Let's go see what else we have out there. Well, we, we know we get Chipotle too, but let's see what else we have. So, uh, oh, it looks like Sprint. That deal's going to get done. Sprint and uh, T-Mobile. Okay. That's up 50 cents right now. They get uh, Micron up 98 cents. Texas Instruments, the big one. Caterpillar came out of oh, earnings. They're down. iRobot. Okay. This thing gets smoked. And you can see IRBT. IRBT. This is the Rumba. Ah, okay. We're not buying enough Rumbas. This is the second that, one. Is that the, like, um, you know, the vacuumer, the, yeah, exactly. the self driving It runs around by itself, right. Right. Okay. You Robots know? of vacuum and wash yeah. those and perform. Wow, what, what is this? Talk about deviating though, and perform battlefield reconnaissance and bomb disposal. Oh well, yeah, geez, they're working. Yeah, no, yeah. I just say oh, yeah. that's what yeah. I say. Do they do even more than that? Yeah, I oh, guess yeah. they do a little bit yeah. more than that. Yeah, that's. And it makes sense. You got a little automated, you know, robot, right? You can. Yeah, and you'll see that this thing wants to get. I think it's 155. I was looking at. Yikes. No, 155. Like, talk 55. about some volatility in the last yeah, couple 55. of years. Yeah, 55. 55 is sticking out, man. Um, now, the, companies like this, right, like, um, so let's see, they're a $2 billion company. I just wanted to see what they actually, like, are taking in, how big they are. Um, they get some growth, they do. Uh, it's just something where I see, like, why can't anybody make that? Why can't you have a generic knockoff target version Roomba? Right. You know, that's a, you know right. um, in terms of they're, they're at the stage, anybody can make a robot that just runs around your carpet and picks up. So I just, maybe that's kind of some of the heat where it's taken. Um, as they struggle to grow, but yeah. those numbers look good, man. They get growth, they get profit growth, and and not enough. They're getting though. taken to the well. Leaders. You know, it's wild about this. It, it looked like they the, the market wasn't believing what they were saying because their earnings per share number went up, but their gross revenue went down. Okay, never. And that's very, always never a good. problem. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, what happens, folks? The market will not believe that. So, <laughs> there you go. So yeah, they made twenty five cents a share. They were basically almost about to break even, right? It's supposed to be three cents. Yeah. But where's their revenue? There's there's their revenue. Uh, well, even yeah, I guess that's good enough. Fiscal year revenue is going to be under one point two to one point one two five. They were looking for one point two eight. Maybe click it down. Yeah, there you go. Two hundred sixty million in revenue. Two sixty. They're supposed to take two sixty eight. They're saying, okay, how did you make five hundred percent more than you were supposed yeah. to make? And I saw <laughs> right, and I saw the headline. There might be slows, right. trade wars, whatever. And you know, basically, what if you see the writing on the wall as a company that you're going to really lose some sales? You cut a lot of costs. Yep. Well, that's fine for ninety days. What do you do in the next ninety days exactly. when you can't sell anything and you can't sell anything? Right. So, uh, did Boeing actually come out? They sure did. Oh, cool. Okay. So. Worst loss ever. I saw a headline oh, or something. Oh, really? Yeah. There it is. Okay. Home. Oh. oh, they went from an earnings per share number a dollar ninety eight to a loss of five eighty two. Okay. That's a number. <laughs> it sure they're, is. They're lucky that that is only down that much. Yeah. That's pretty wild, man. That's that's not. They're not getting smoked for what could be happening here. They're burning. Let's see what they're saying. They're burning a billion cash. Boeing burned one billion in cash during the second quarter, sign that the strain from the protect. Uh, protracted uh, grounding of the 737 Max. Well, you know, a billion 
They're going to end up burning more than a billion, man. So, yeah, they're studying investors are looking at the performance compared with last year's $4.3 billion free cash flow gain to gauge how badly, as in, you know, comparing it to how when, when times were good and they were just printing billions. Um, so here's, let's see, all commercial aircraft. And is this what they're delivering, maybe? Yeah, I'm trying to look. Either way, let's pull up the chart. Uh, so I think they were down about 1%. Yeah, down about 1%. Nothing too crazy. A lot of that probably priced into that thing. Pretty intense. You know so, what, as we, let's, uh, we got oil coming up. Let's take a quick look at that market before oh, cool. we come into the number, all right? Yeah. Just uh, to see where we're trading at, we're going to come into the number. So we got EIA inventories. We'll pull up the estimates. We're trading at 57.23. I pulled this back to last night. Where's our volatility on the MS? And you know, we had, we had a drawdown last night but you had a there. build inside gasoline and distilled. So I want to show that's where the API came out. Okay. And we're not far off from there. That's why I just want to, you know, it was a little bit of a surprise, but we'll see if this whole DIA comes Stay out. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Same as uh, uh, the API yesterday. API had a big one, big number here though. Median estimate only looking for a decline of about 4.2. We get a decline, like you said, of about 10.8 million barrels. 
Jumping back to the chart, see how we're hitting it. Less oil than you thought. That should Popped cause some it. rising prices, and sure enough, it has, man. $57.50. Not that long ago, we had a 54 handle on oil, as in quite a run volatility. Uh, we'll see how that market shakes out. 57.50, and we were just at 56.80 not that long ago. Wow. Yeah. Let's see what the market's doing. We, we're gonna get. We gotta get you the story, folks. Speaking it, of commodities, you've heard, heard the story, but this is like wild, man. So, so that's where we're at the in the markets. In the, okay. The ship. Oh yeah. So market-wise, we, we get the Dow down 86, the Nasdaq up 11, S and P's are flat. And Speaking of commodities, how commodities, about the how about the commodity of cocaine? Yeah, the commodity of <laughs> and cocaine and the shipping of it and and the shipping exactly. Oof, because man, this story. What you have here is that uh, inside the shipping's record cocaine bust. When you, when you hear this, this is like Just wild, the man. the gall that they go through, right? Yeah, and totally. So, go for it, man. No, go ahead. So, so on June 16th, the MSC Guyane was making its way into the Delaware Bay for a stopover at the Port of Philly when it was greeted by boats carrying a dozen U.S. armed customs and border protection and the other federal agents. In the waters, agents climbed aboard. And, and I guess they look at these containers to see, you know, the seals, the right? Seals, to, yes. to see if the locks on the steel containers um, were intact. The seals didn't look right. They escorted the boat. Uh, the, the fleet that handles a significant share of the world's seaborne right. trade. It's owned by J.P. Morgan, by the way. <laughs> part, yep. Um, it, and uh, so, let, let's, uh, sorry, I just lost. To the Port of South Philadelphia, early the next morning, seven of the boxes were x-rayed and opened to reveal ba bales and bales of cocaine. It took them a week to weigh and document <sighs> it all in all. Uh, nearly 20 tons 20 of cocaine tons. on one ship. A ton's 2,200 pounds, right? Uh, yes, it is, yeah. correct. Uh, and that's what they have, almost 40,000 pounds. Uh, basically, you know, it's, it's remarkable. Uh, $1.3 billion, they're talking yeah. about that. Uh, the largest seizure in the 230-year history. And so this is really where it gets interesting, right? In yeah. terms of, we were reading through this whole article this is where it, two different wild. breaks. Yeah. It, well, what it is, too, is the gall and, yeah. uh, you know, like, just... So it sends shockwaves through the shipping world. It hit operations at one of the world's largest ship operators, rattled an arm of investment bank, J.P. Morgan, that owns the ship, and raised questions about the security behind a business that on any given day has millions of containers moving between the world's trading nations. And so smugglers have long used small planes. We all know these stories, yeah. right? And um, boats, trucks, etc. But so many ships go, ships go unchecked, and then other smugg smugglers bring along container seals that look very close to the original ones, all right? So interviews with people familiar with the investigation for the affidavit that says, you know, how did they do this, okay? Now this is it. Yeah. Wait to hear this. According to the affidavit, the MSC Guyane was approached twice by more than 10 boats in total while it sailed at night. So In the Pacific Ocean, yeah. between... Chile, Peru, and Panama. So they have 10 different boats pulling up to this boat right. at night. The ship's crane was used to bring the drugs on board. Two crew members stuffed the bales into containers holding other cargo. Uh, one crew member operated the crane to bring on numerous bales of cocaine that were wrapped in netting. Along with bales of cocaine were replacement seals, which uh, would be utilized in the containers. They need some better replacement seals, I would bet, if they... Uh, so and they were paid fifty thousand dollars each, the two crew members. Now it goes on to state that I think there were eight people arrested in right. this, and that's what we're saying. You know, there is a skeleton crew at night on some of these ships. There, well, I, I think the ship itself only carries twenty-three people. Okay, even though it's that big. Sure, I mean, sure. You know what I mean? And at night, when you're just sailing, the boat's yeah. doing most of it anyway. You right. just need a couple of people on the deck, probably making sure right. that everything's going well. Um, it's still hard to comprehend that you stop, or maybe they don't even stop. <laughs> in the middle of the ocean, yeah. and you get boats coming up, and they think they're not going to get caught. Oh. It, but they've probably done it a million times. We I mean, only know when they do get caught, exactly. right? That's no, it, to, to say that I, I bet, um, the, yeah, and we, we all like, know that. Now, the, when we're reading this, it looks like, folks, that, that the destination wasn't right. even the United States, right? right? The destination was Europe. So that Philadelphia was, was this boat's only planned stop before the ship was due to head across the Atlantic Ocean for planned calls in Rotterdam, yeah. the Netherlands, Antwerp, Belgium, La Havre, France, and the, you know, authorities believe European buyers were ready to take the cocaine and distribute it. So yeah, right. and, and shipping executives say the ship's role in one of the few South American services that connect to Europe. So you're going from South America, yeah. you're getting that to Europe. There's not many avenues that probably right. go, especially when you're talking about shipping 40,000 pounds of drugs in one trip. 
I get, um, I, it's pretty I've never remarkable, had time man. Comprehend it. I'd love to know, like, what is the next Naco movie we're gonna see that sends in this kind of money? They, I, they right? gotta have, they gotta have content creators at Netflix getting ready to make that that. I, I movie. hope so. I hope so. I want to see it, man. <laughs> I do. Eight crew members have been charged and are being held in the U.S. Another 16, including the captain, were allowed to leave Philadelphia. So eight are held okay. that they aren't letting go. Yeah, so there's 24 and, altogether. And the 16, right. including the captain, they probably couldn't prove or, or yeah. weren't sure, but at least eight of them they're not letting now go. Now, that with, with, they may lose the ship, too. This is yeah. only a two-year-old ship. The world's second biggest container ship operated by capacity faces losses after paying $50 million in cash and bond to release the vessel after it was held for nearly a month. And then it's saying the U.S. attorney in the eastern Philadelphia says it plans to seek permanent fort, a forfeiture of the ship, and the ship's a $90 million ship. It's only two years old. <laughs> they picked a good ship. If you're trying to get $1.3 billion of cocaine through the system, man, you make sure that ship is just, running well. It's just a total mind. It is crazy, man. That's, that's, it that's, makes your mind spin, for it sure. It does. It does. It, and I guess, you know, it would kind of make sense when you have that much trade going through. It's going to be really hard to catch everyone. Oh, and, if, and if they get one package through, you've managed to get $1.3 billion worth of uh, your product into Europe. No, Pretty no. crazy. I mean, anyone that lives in a major port city, just go down and look at the containers yeah. in your city. Never mind containers at major ports. We I got mean, them in Tampa. Right? Oh, I mean, Tampa, I see Boston. Yeah. Oh, I saw, Boston, for I, sure. I saw them in China. Yeah, I mean, no. forget it. As far as Tampa's you small compared to yeah. some of them. In but even, even Tampa's big. huge. Boston's, when you, yeah, yeah. So checking back on oil, seeing where we're heading. We're coming into that news at about 57.20. We're trading higher. 57.59 currently in the price of that crew contract and I wonder if I still uh, we'll pull up the breakdown maybe after the break of uh, all that oil breakdown but higher prices yeah let's go to Exxon we'll see uh, sure it's got caught a little bit here yeah there yeah. you go you got still having a hard time getting the price I mean it's up 50 cents right now 57 but these uh, not Chevron now Exxon a different ball game Sh Chevron CVX you know Chevron is much stronger I mean, you know, the, the, the difference in, the, in this chart is pretty dramatic, you know. It's laying at its, at its highs. Yeah. You know, the high out there is 135. You're at 126. Okay. And we bring it over to, I mean, none of these guys that have to worry about making money, but the difference in the, in the you know, yeah. structure is quite a bit, you yeah. know, down 25% from its high. Yeah. You know? Even really, that's 30 bucks off uh, 75. It's, 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 it's big money, man. Yeah, yeah. And... As in, that's like almost 40%. And watch. So you got revenue, $65 billion in, Sh in Exxon. <laughs> $65 billion in 90 days. With a B. Yeah. And $40 billion in Chevron. Okay. Yeah. How about, speaking of uh, crazy valuations, how about Beyond Meat? What are, oh, we do what are we doing today? Look at this. This, this is not stopping, folks. Okay? So today... Uh, we got to get. Uh, What's going on, Rob Fox again? We got to get uh, Duncan Steve. Give us a call, man. They're, they're doing business with Duncan Donuts. That's the news this morning. Okay. Um, Duncan yeah. Sandwich. Yeah. Good. Beyond Meat, uh, the fake food company okay. uh, that's seen the stock price raise 700 percent, has notched another fast food client. Duncan will offer Beyond sausage breakfast sandwiches at 163 restaurants in Manhattan. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. 
Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Uh, Dow, Dow down 70, Nasdaq's up 20, S&P's up three and a half. Let's go over to our members, the Teddy Cake Stack, and as we do each and every Wednesday at 40 past the hour, you can reach Teddy every trading day, folks, at forex-trading-unlock.com. That's forex-trading-unlock.com. You want to understand currencies, you want to understand cross rates, you want to get a great education. That's right. We love it. Each and every Wednesday, each and every day, he's out there for us. Teddy Cake Snack, what's going on, brother? Morning. Thanks for that intro, guys. Hey, Good morning, man. Teddy. I, I told Tommy in the middle of the week last week. You're going to you know get him I mean? studying, man. You, you, got, you got me going, man, and I love it. Those you know? cross rates. Because you know what happens. You got a lot to talk about today, then. For I'm you. ready. Let's, let's go, man. Where are we going? Okay, well, first we have the Central Bank Marathon that I think everyone needs to be aware of. Uh, this week, the whole week, especially uh, tomorrow, very big ECB meeting. Uh, then we have all the other central banks basically for the next two weeks that are coming out with either speeches or meetings. And we definitely have some potential interest rate cuts on the table. So uh, today the uh, euro uh, was definitely impacted by the uh, manufacturing numbers. Uh, Germany had its worst manufacturing numbers in seven years come out today. That's a big uh, number. That's a big deal. Yeah, interesting. A okay. Huge deal, exactly, especially with tomorrow's ECB uh, meeting. Now, that, that euro, talking, it, it's, it's that, pressing that bottom there, right? I mean, it breaks right. that bottom, is really going to be in trouble, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And all that's going to, I think, going to come into play now because uh, today we had uh, Boris uh, Johnson, be, uh, he's now the new uh, prime minister of the UK. So we have today with that, now we have these numbers that are right in front of, uh, now as he's taking control of the leadership, they have a, a, a group from the EU that's coming to the UK to talk for a week with him about the Brexit deal. Okay. Can you so imagine with, being in that room? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. A lot of nothing. Absolutely. Yeah. So, but with the ECB meeting tomorrow and these manufacturing levels, I think that uh, quantitative easing was something that we thought was going to happen in this, uh, this meeting actually coming up tomorrow. Now they may actually cut a, a quarter point. So there's a there's a good chance of seeing some kind of shakeup with the uh, with that central bank and then other central banks to follow over the next uh, week and a half. Because Draghi so. was really strong with his words last meeting, and then if they're getting bad data since then, right? Yes. I mean that is right. pretty substantial. And, yeah. and Germany's the powerhouse over there anyway, right? Right. So if Germany's coming right. down, that's that's trouble in paradise flat out, right? And they're the biggest exporter out of the EU, um, and so since they're export driven, seven year low for production. That's not a good sign. Right. Not the booming market everywhere else. Pretty wild, man. Yeah. Absolutely. So, 
You know, what, what do you think that, you know, when I was watching that euro yesterday, I guess it has to do with manufacturing. I was surprised that the euro was getting slammed more than the pound yesterday. I guess the, the market already knew that Johnson was going to be the, the dude, do you know what I mean? But it right. was really intriguing. Like, I, every time I keep looking at that, I keep saying to myself, you know what, it might not be that bad if the UK just decides that, hey, we're going, man, you know, and you're going to make a deal with us. Cause well, pretty interesting you mentioned that because you're right. The euro had, it broke a little bit off the number this morning, came back. It's been down for a couple of sessions, but there's not much of a, of a move going on. Yeah. The pound, however, has set a short-term bottom. Today, they're up on Boris's uh, inauguration or whatever you call it over there. So that's positive. Um, so the pound factor in the dollar index looks like it might be stabilizing, whereas the euro looks like it's going to lay on support a little bit. So it's a little bit choppy with that. Um, but since you brought up those two currencies, if you look at the euro pound cross rate, okay. that market took a nosedive today. Interesting. Okay. So the pound versus the dollar is gaining strength. And probably, I think, over the next week or so, because it needs a correction anyhow. For it to rally, it's been going down so hard for the past few months that it's, it's set for a little bit of a pop, you know, nothing big, but just a little bit of a, a profit taking move, you know. That's yeah. quite a chart. That is, I just put the Euro pound cross rate up, yeah. Right. And that's been going up for quite some time. So last week and a half, you go, go you have it going south. Now, okay, so explain to us right now. So what is exactly does that mean? We got the Euro. So right now it's at 89 cents. Yeah. Uh, and is, and mm -hmm. so it's gone all the way from what, 85 cents since about April. So has that been a strengthening Euro versus the pound, Teddy? Correct. 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 Yeah. Cool. I see. Okay. The only reason I really guessed that quickly, yeah. the pound has been in trouble over the last right. month and a half, right? right? With okay, everything cool. that's been going okay. there. So they yeah. should be weakening as it's been falling right. apart. Theresa May has sure. been out. That would that would right. make sense. Still quite a move, man. Okay, Definitely. Good. I get it. Now. And, I get and it. now that might be showing the actual turn because yeah. the, the pound dollar has started to show kind of a bottoming thing, but this market all of a sudden it's blasting down. Pretty it's cool. Breaking through support. That is cool. That's I, I get it. Those right. relationships, Pounds man. Strength. Yeah. Pound strength. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. 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 Pound so, strength so, on the back of horse. horse. Yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> wild. Man. Yeah, it is wild. There's, you know, th this whole interest rate structure deal, um, it looks like, I mean, our economy is still going fine, but they're, they're going to cut rates, man. <laughs> Absolutely. I wouldn't, I wouldn't take that off the table because no. we've been talking for weeks about the eurozone probably leaning towards a quantitative easing before cutting rates, but with these numbers, this is where now this is where you use a short uh, cutting of rates. When you have a number that comes out this bad, yeah, that's when you're like, okay, we've already been looking at a slowing of the economy. Now we have a major economic number. That's when bond markets start to sway, and that's when you start to have interest rate moves. Right. No, and you know it's. Like even on notes and bonds today, even you know the S and P shook off the negative. It's only up two, but guess what? Those notes and bonds won't stop, man. Yeah. They're just buying them hand over fist, man. I mean, it's like, you know. Yeah. And and I guess when you when we look back, you know, folks, if you look back, um, even 11 months, you had the 10 year at 3.3. So if you're actually a bond trade, when you're at 2.2 now, that is one monster move. Yeah. You know. Big move. Yeah, that's a very huge. big move. Yeah. So now what's interesting is all these interest rate things that are going on, they're all kind of working together. So I think it's more than changing trends for the most part. It's going to lift ranges either up or low, you know, depending on which currency cross you're talking about. Yes. So I think the only like, like the yen right now, it's sideways. I don't care what happens. I don't think that thing is going to get a major bull or a bearish correction to any degree, you know. So, right. Except for, now we do have a couple options out there. Um, the New Zealand dollar, U.S. dollar, and the Australian dollar, U.S. dollar, I think those are going to start to give you some swing trade opportunities. Um, and then as far as like looking for gauging a pound direction, you know, like we have the dollar index, look at that euro pound and watch that. If that continues to erode, pound strength versus the euro typically means it's going to be strong also with the dollar as well. Okay. Yeah. And that would and that, and be just deviant enough. Yeah. That that you got Johnson saying I'm going to leave anyway, and the pound gets stronger, you know. And right. Hey, listen, people would stop paying attention to that. They're saying, hey, guess what? The pound saying we're going to go make money because these poor people that had money in the pound, man. I mean, I saw them lose a fortune in the United States. I I happened to be right, right at a cigar bar with one guy who had just bought the a huge amount of land, and mm -hmm. hadn't 
bottom line changed his money, sure. and overnight he lost forty grand. Like that. Oh, that. Sure. Yeah. Man. yeah, and that's small compared to. I mean, but it was sure. big money for him. You Definitely. Know what I mean? It was like oh, huge. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Folks, sure. every trading day right here, you can go to trading forex forex. <laughs> Dash trading dash unlock.com. That's forex dash trading dash unlock.com. Check out Teddy every trading day. Teddy, you have a great one, a safe one. Of course, we look forward to speaking to you next week. You too, guys. Thank you very much. Thanks, thanks, thanks for the update, Appreciate Teddy. It. I get the cross rates now. Euro pound. Watch I out. I like it. Euro like pound. It. Stay right there. Tommy and I come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. Tom O'Brien published the 900th issue of his weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, on July 22nd. It's amazing he started The Gold Report more than 17 years ago when gold was trading at only $252. To celebrate, we're having a special Tiger Dollar sale. Right now, you can spend only $495, and we'll give you 200 extra Tiger Dollars, so you'll end up with 695 Tiger Dollars, which is the yearly price of The Gold Report. Tiger Dollars can be used for any TFNN newsletter or service, and this offer is open to new and current subscribers. With gold making six-year highs and gold mining equities trading higher, this is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report at a dramatic savings. For all the details, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This deal ends July 31st, so don't miss out. Get your Tiger Dollars and sign up today for the Gold Report 900th issue sale. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Okay, so um, you had the big drop. EIA crude numbers at 10.30, right? So you had that 10.8 million barrel miss. Um, and you wanted to take a look at gas even. Yeah. So it looks like we saw a draw in gasoline of 226,000 barrels. Yeah. The estimate was for a draw of 1.4. So a little bit of a reverse in terms of much yeah. less crude in the market. We've seen some higher prices. We'll jump back to that chart in a moment. It's kind of impaired, almost really where we were trading at prior to that number. Gasoline, um, pretty marginal. And they yeah. were looking for a decline. So a little bit more right, gasoline. still was actually a... You know, they still, they, they were looking for a build, but they still got a build, so. Yeah. That's still, that's still start telling me they're going to have a hard time holding oil up. And as, I mean, yeah. 57.35, that's your 50, um, that's your 10.30 bar. We're basically right where we were trading right. at prior to that number. No, yeah. real, no real impact. Because picture, you get, 
like gasoline, yeah, it did have a drawdown. But bottom line is that you think with a, a draw of 10 million barrels of crude, the drawdown would be more substantial in gasoline because we don't, none of us use crude. You use the, when the crude gets cracked, you use the, the still, you use the gasoline, you use the plastic. Sure. You know what I'm saying? So, yes, so there's the refiner utilization. There were some storms. I was reading through a couple of things. So, the crude production, 700,000 barrels a day, huge miss on crude production. This had to do with some of the storms. Refinery utilization down 1.3. Estimate was for an increase, actually. So, the refineries weren't really um, bustling. Crude production was down. Um, always interesting what goes into that. Wow. Yeah. So, S&Ps, folks, bottom line is that uh, wants to finish this ABC structure on the way up. You know, we're at 3,009 right now, and 3,055 is the number. Do we get Facebook earnings after the bell tonight? We do. We get a monster. Okay. We get, we get a lot of them. We get a lot. I we know. A lot. Facebook, Facebook, after... Facebook will move the NDX. And I think you got Google tomorrow yeah. as well, let alone a plethora. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. We got Fast Market coming up next, and we got our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. I'll be back this afternoon. Thanks, Bell. Thanks, man. Go get them, folks.